hey what's up friends welcome back to the channel in this video we're going to be taking a look at top 10 tricks in bricks builder without wasting time i just want to jump right into it so if you've been using bricks builder for quite some time now you're probably aware of some few tricks and there are some tricks you may not know so in today's video i'm going to share top 10 tricks in bricks builder that you may not have come across so let's jump right into it number one did you know that you could create a new page right from within bricks builder sometimes you want to create a new page maybe you're working on something and you want to create a new page and the instinct you know the force of habit is to go back to the wordpress backend and to create your page then click edit with bricks and then come into bricks builder but do you know that you can create a new page and publish it right from within bricks so if you go to pages you can click here and then you can write your new page and then i'm going to click create page and then uh, we have created that page. Now I'm going to open that page. And once that page is open, I can start designing right away. But one more thing is left. This page is not yet published. So to publish this page, you have to go here and click publish. You see that icon disappears and then that page is published. Now, if you go to the back end of your WordPress, you're going to see that new page that I just created right here. Trick number two, you can switch pages from within Bricks. So if you're working in Bricks and you want to switch to another page, no need to jump to the back end. All you can do is go here again and then just click the page that you want to switch to. And then it's just going to open that page and you're going to start working right away. Tip number three, you can also create a new template from within Bricks Builder. A lot of times when you want to create a template, you go back here, you go to bricks, you go to template, and then you start creating a new template, you know, add new template and all the rest. But you don't need to do any of that. Okay. I'm just going to go back, but I'm going to go into bricks. You want to create a new template. All you need to do is to come here to template and then click here, create a template, add your template title. Let's just say, I want to create a 404 page template type. Let me go all the way down here. Uh, what is it called? error page yep and then template bundle if i have a bundle i'll just that is not compulsory and then i click create a template once that template is created i can go ahead to edit that template and it will just be as if i created the template from the back end so if i refresh this you will see that that template is available here the fourth tip i'm going to show you today is how to create additional breakpoint do you know that you can create additional breakpoints in break so what i'm going to do is i'm going to quickly switch over uh, to this page now i have uh, my default breakpoints here, these, these, this, and this. Sometimes I want to view something at a very small, now the smaller phone size, maybe like 320 pixel. Uh, um, anytime I want to do that, I would always come here and type it manually. But anytime you do that and go back and come back, you always have the 478 as your smallest screen size. But you can always add a new breakpoint. So I can come in here and then I can click create. Then I'm going to label it small phone. And then the width I want is want it to be 320 pixel and then I'm going to choose my icon to be this and then I'm going to click create and that is created so I now have my breakpoints I can go ahead to style let me close this I can go ahead to even style at that breakpoints also but of course it wouldn't be necessary to style at that breakpoint if you already have 478 and this is just to give you an idea how your page is going to be on a very small phone tip number five you can change your breakpoint preview width inside the builder now what do i mean by that now when you're viewing your breakpoints uh bricks what bricks does is that is it views exactly or almost exactly the width of your breakpoint let's say you want to view how your website looks on tablet portraits and you click here so you can see that what you're viewing is 990 okay so uh your tablet portrait is less than or equal to 991 so you're viewing at almost the same width but between your tablet portrait and your mobile landscape, which is 767, there's a whole range of sizes. So um, sometimes if you want to view the size that is closest to the next breakpoint, it would be the most ideal thing to do because you want to know how your design looks up to the point that it changes. So uh, since the next one is uh, 760, now this is 767 or less okay less than or equal to 767 you might want this to show 768 or at least 770 so you could go into this breakpoint you could just go to that breakpoint that is 991 and click edit and now where you have with builder you can add your 770 pixel and then update 
So what happens is that anytime that you click here, you see you are now previewing it at a width of 770 and that makes sense. Why? Because let me demonstrate it for you. Now we have this here. I'm going to go responsive and then you are with this 990, right? But between 990 and 768, you have a whole range of sizes, okay? So uh, you don't want to view it at 990. You want to view it, you know, at a size that is closer to the next breakpoint in case there are devices in between that that is as small as that. So the changes that you make, okay, so at 770, uh, you can still see what your site looks like from within the builder. You don't need to come out here to use the Chrome inspection tool to do that. The sixth tip and trick I'm gonna show you is still on breakpoints. I've had a lot of people ask questions. How do I know what my website is gonna look like on a very big screen? A lot of people uh, could use the Retina screen, which is uh, 25, 60 pixel or so or thereabout. Some people use a uh, screen size up to 1980. What if you really want to check or you wanna make changes to those screen sizes only just above the your normal, the base breakpoint. Now, if we go to the breakpoint, you can see that this, your base breakpoint is 1279, okay? And you want to make changes to a screen size that are larger than this only. Well, you can do that. You could still add new breakpoints. So I can come here and create a new breakpoint. I'm going to say large screen. And then I'm going to come here and just put a 2560, which is kind of like retina display. And I'm going to create that. So now we have created a large screen. So if you go all the way here, you're going to see that um, that is a wider screen now. I want you to take note, when you create that, you want to make sure that the base breakpoint is still your desktop size, okay? Except you want to change your base breakpoint to the large screen. But if you want to make changes only to the large screen when you are on the large screen preview, you want to leave your base breakpoint on the desktop, okay? But if you want the changes to cascade all the way down, you want to change your base breakpoint to the large screen. Let me show you what I mean. So right now, the base breakpoint is still here. That means if I change this color to let's say pink, if I go there, it's gonna be pink. But what if I didn't want this to be pink at the upper breakpoint? Now, notice it's pink all through, right? Now, what if I didn't want this to be pink at a very large screen? If I can, if I come here and then I change it to something like that, okay? And then if you go here, it is still gonna be pink on your desktop, but on a very large screen, it is not going to be pink the same thing you can change anything you want to change at this breakpoint and it will not cascade down to any other breakpoint because you've set it to happen only at a specific screen size and above notice it says larger than now because it says larger than it would be a very good idea to start maybe at 19 maybe 1980 pixel and then that means um, it's any screen size that is bigger than the base upwards then it can have that settings. Since the breakpoint configuration in Bricks are still under experimental features, you wanna be careful how you do that. Tip number seven, sometimes you're walking inside Bricks and you wanna quickly check for something. Uh, you wanna to go to maybe Z index, you wanna to go to uh, position relative, position absolute and all that. And a couple of times you try to remember where exactly it is. For example, where, where, where is opacity settings here? You know, sometimes, uh, we may forget sometimes I do forget so one of the ways of finding this quickly is by using the search function so you could always use the search function and search for stuff like opacity and you can just change it from here let's say 0 0.5 right away uh, but I want to show you that there's a shortcut to access that settings now if you're working and you want to quickly do something you can always hit shift ctrl f and just start typing okay so I can start typing position and then I can simply change that position to whatever I want I'm going to clear that out so that is a quick way of finding your settings instead of going to start scrolling all the way and looking where is position where, where is it where is where, okay there now it's faster to just shift ctrl f and just type whatever you want tip number eight is just like tip number seven you want to add an element to the structure panel or onto the page yes you can always go here and just drag maybe a div and drop or click on it to add but what if you are just the keyboard type you can quickly hit shift ctrl e and then just type the elements a div hit tab and hit it now i want to show you something let me just clear all the elements from here and then i want to quickly maybe add a section all right let's say you you're here and you want to quickly add a section 
you can quickly focus your cursor on the search element panel by hitting shift control e and just tap you know section and then if i hit shift control e it's going to focus on that again i can just type div and then i can tap and put as much div as i want okay uh, of course if you selected this you can just do div hit one two three four and add so the shortcut enables you to add content to your page for those who prefer to use keyboard so if i hold down shift control e again i can just uh do a heading and just put a heading there shift control e and do uh, a button so that is another tip for you to use in adding elements to your page the next will be tip number nine but before we continue if you enjoyed this video so far i'd like you to hit the like button and subscribe if you haven't and i also recommend you turn on notifications so you don't miss other videos that come your way thank you so i want to show you that there are three ways to add elements in brick so i'm just going to go ahead and delete all of these and let's have this okay uh, there are three ways the first way is you know you can just click here click and you've added your element okay so that's the first way you just click the second way is you can drag that element inside a container on the canvas and you can see how tricky that could be sometimes it's kind of difficult to know exactly where you are you know because at that point everything is just those lines are just you know mumbled up uh not a very nice way of dragging an element you know i've put that in the container but i wasn't quite sure if it is inside the container or not but one nice way of adding an element in bricks to your page is by dragging it directly to the structure panel and this is very and extremely useful if you have a very complex page with a lot of things so if you know exactly the container or the div or the elements that you want to place that in uh, it's very convenient to just move that directly to the structure panel and place it exactly where you want so i want a, a block here i can drop it in between there i want to have a heading there i could just drop it inside there so it is very very convenient way to add an element to your page i also want to remind you that if you want to use the click uh the container that you click will be where the element is being placed so yeah i click on the container there and i click let's say button it's going to drop it there now if i click on the heading normally you should drop it in between the button and the heading so let's see if that will work out i want to drop in an icon yeah it drops it in between so that is how you add elements to the page and finally the last tip i'm going to bring to you is something you've probably never used maybe you have but i like to bet that you probably never used it and it is adding lines you know to your heading so this works with class also i'm just going to give this heading line heading okay so what I'm going to do is I have a heading here and I want to add some of those nice um, accent lines to it. So I can go here and Bricks has this feature and I don't know how many people use this, but this is a very neat feature. A lot of times when you want to do what I'm about to do, normally what I do is to use pseudo elements to do it. And sometimes it takes quite a while to achieve, but there is this nice feature in Bricks that you can simply add a separator. So I want to add it to the right. Oh, sorry to the left that is where i want my separator to be and the width now i want my width to be let's say uh 50 pixel you see i have that width there and i want the height to be um let's say two pixel i have that element and that is it so i want to add a color to it so i want it to be maybe red now if i come here and apply that uh class you see nothing happens because unfortunately that class doesn't change the separator you know so but it, it, you have to come and put it here yourself, okay? You have to actually uh, put the separator value. So uh, unfortunately, the class doesn't carry that over, but all the other styling, you know, is being carried over. So let's just take a look at what you can do with this. Now, if I go ahead to increase the size of this heading, so let me go in here and then take the size of this heading all the way up to 80, you can see that this doesn't grow together with it, okay? So I'm going to delete that size. Now let's go back here. Let's go back to the separator. So what I want is for the height to increase with the heading, okay? So I'm gonna come here and just put one M. You can see it grows all the way up, but I don't want it to be the same height, okay? In this case, so I wanna make it 0.1 M or 0.2 M. Now watch what happens when I increase the size of this header or heading. So I'm gonna to go to typography and take it to 80. You can see that the size increases in proportion to the size of the heading the size of that line so if i take it to 50 you see if i take it all the way down to 24 you see it it decreases also now if you want the width to increase 
uh, the same, okay? So I could just make this 5M, and maybe you don't want it to be 5, maybe you want it to be 2, okay, at that point. But then if I go ahead and increase this to say 80, you can see that it increases in proportion. So you want it to increase in proportion, you want to use M because M is relative to the font, to the element font size. Now, let's say I want it to, I want to swap it. So I'm going to, I can make this 0 0.2 RAM and I can make this, sorry, M, and I can make this uh, 1 M. Now, if you want it to be the same height, you just make it 1 M and then you have it. So I can go back and just remove that size and you see, I can have uh, what I want there. Now, what if you want that to be a circle? There are a lot of things you could do with that. Uh, you could go into this style and make it dotted, you see? So if you have, uh, that can give you, you know, a, a circle if you make it, let's say, let's just make it 1M, 1M, and then the spacing, uh, yep, spacing is 20 by default, you could just give it 40, depending, okay? So that's it, that's how you can get a circle. If you want it to be smaller, of course, you could always change this to 0 0.5, by 0 0.5 and you see you have a smaller dot there i mean this is not like a bullet point this is just like a design element for the header and so guys that's it on the 10 top tricks inside bricks builder there's probably a lot more that you know i could have mentioned but i just wanted to do 10 things that i found useful or i have been using and i wanted to share that with you so i hope you like this video and you got something from it so until next time have a great day Bye.